we are descending on glide slope and at some point close to the runway glide slope and poppy information start to mismatch why does that happen which one should i follow stay tuned and find out Hello folks, welcome back to the Aircraft Performance Channel. My name is Thiago Brenner and on this video we're going to discuss why the puppy and glide slope information sometimes start to mismatch close to the runway. Which one should I follow? I'll give you a hint on this one as well. I'm recording this video from a hotel bedroom. This is a big part of crew life. I'm sorry about that. I hope the audio is at least good enough. But let's jump into it. Well. To start our discussion about this topic, I will show you first of all how PAPI is calibrated. PAPI, for those of you who are not familiar with the acronym, stands for Precision Approach Path Indicator. It is a set of four lights that is installed right next to the runway and can show two different colors, either red or white. When you are on the adequate approach path to the runway, say 3 degrees, these lights show two red lights and two white lights. And this uh, normal approach path is a corridor that can be 20 minutes wide, 25 minutes wide, or even 30 minutes wide. Let's say on our example here that we have a 20 minutes wide corridor. That means that from 2 degrees and 50 minutes up until 3 degrees and 10 minutes, you will see the same thing. Two red lights and two white lights indicated that you are on approach path. If you are a little bit high on the corridor, anywhere between 3 degrees and 10 minutes up until 3 degrees and 30 minutes, 3 and a half degrees, that's the same thing, uh, you will see three white lights and one red light indicated that you are a little bit high on the approach. If you are anywhere above 3 degrees and 30 minutes, you will see four white lights indicated that you are too high on approach. From the downside, if you are between 2 degrees and 50 minutes and 2 degrees and 30 minutes, 2.5 degrees, you will see 3 red lights and 1 white light indicated that you are a little bit low on approach. And if you are anywhere below 2.5 degrees, you will see 4 red lights indicating that you are too low and dangerously low on approach. And what about the calibration process? You will get the minimum path that indicates normal path and subtract 2 minutes. That is, uh, in our example, 2 degrees and 48 minutes. At this point, you will see the beam projected over the threshold of the runway. This is called the minimum eye height over threshold, because any pilot flying any kind of aircraft will be sitting at exactly the same height when receiving this information crossing the runway threshold. Well, you can see that no matter if you are flying a 737 or a 747, the pilot is sitting at the same height. But the landing gear of the airplane is a whole other story. And this information will get to a new one that is the landing gear being projected over the runway. And in this example, you will see that the 747 has a much lower value of landing gear over the runway than the 737. And here in the drawing is why. Despite both pilots, the one flying the 737 and the one flying the 747, uh, are sitting at roughly 50 feet above the runway at this point, when they cross the landing gear, the main landing gear of above the threshold, one pilot will be crossing the landing gear at 34 feet and the other is going to cross the landing gear at only 12 feet above this runway. Here we have an issue that must be addressed by the airport authority. You must guarantee a minimum wheel clearance for the most critical airplane that is intended to operate on the airport. How can we calibrate a puppy to make the airplane as big as a 747 uh, have a larger or a higher ma a minimum wheel clearance? Keeping the angle of the approach indicated by the puppy constant at, at 3 degrees, there is only one way to do that. You can push at a further point the poppy indication light. And if you put poppy at a further point of the runway, say instead of 1,000 feet down the runway, 1,500 feet down the runway, 
you will now raise the height the airplane will cross the runway threshold. Now all pilots are sitting at roughly 75 feet over the runway and then cross the runway threshold. But when the main gear of the airplane crosses the runway, the 737 crosses at 60 feet and the 747 will cross uh, the runway threshold at 36 feet. Well, I've just explained how PAPI is calibrated, but what about the glide slope? Well, before jumping into that, let me remind you that all this thing that I'm showing you here in this video is available to you on the Aircraft Performance Weight and Balance book. It is available on Amazon Worldwide as well as on Apple Books Store. If you are interested, please check the link in the description below to purchase it. Moving on to glide slope. The glide slope transmitter antenna is sitting at a point besides the runway, but not exactly at the same point as the poppy is. Well, this is just the beginning of our problems here, as the receiver antenna is also not at the pilot's eye height. In fact, the receiver antenna of the 737 is on the radum on the nose of the airplane. And the 747 has two antennas, but the one that it is using during approach uh, is on just in front of the nose landing gear. Now, this drawing, at least the airplane, is on scale. When you put the receiver antenna perfectly aligned with the signal of the glide slope over the threshold, you have here another information that shows on uh, approach charts. This is the TCH, or Threshold Crossing Height. This is the height that the antenna of the glide slope, the receiving antenna of the glide slope on your airplane, will cross the runway threshold. And the main gear height at this point is not shown on any chart, but you can access this information on some airplane manuals. Well, let me bring back here the Precision Approach Path Indicator showing you that you are on the glide path. Both pilots are sitting at very different heights at this point despite the fact that the airplane is showing that you are on the glide slope. So the 747 pilot will likely see that he is a little bit high on approach, and the 737 pilot will likely see that he or she is a little bit low on the approach. And that's perfectly normal when you are about to cross the runway threshold. If both pilots are ignoring the glide slope and following Papi on a visual approach, it is likely that the navigation display will show that the 747 pilot is a little bit low on approach and the 737 pilot is a little bit high on approach. So that brings us back to the picture I used to illustrate our video. And in this picture, yes, it is uh, manipulated, but in a way for you to see better the information, not changing anything on the picture. It is really on precision approach path indicator. Poppy is really showing you two red lights and two white lights. And it is really showing that the pilot would be high on the glide path. And you can see some examples here of where this information comes from. Here is the poppy and here is the glide slope antenna. Here is the poppy and here is the glide slope antenna again in another airport. You can also identify where the glide slope transmitter antenna is sitting when looking at the airdrome chart. The airdrome chart will show you how much runway you have available beyond the glide slope antenna. Just subtract that from the landing distance available or from the total indicated on the chart and you will see the approximate position of the glide slope antenna near the runway. And what about that? I have explained to you why the information mismatch when you are close to the runway. But I haven't told you which one should you follow. Well, a disclaimer first. This is just my opinion. If your company's SOP says something different, please follow the company's SOP. But in my opinion, once you are at this point, you are already with visual contact to the runway. Please look outside, look at the runway, look at where you want to touch down your airplane, maintain a constant uh, rate of descent and project your landing at that piece of pavement. You can do that. You have always done that long before you have the opportunity to use Pappy or Glideslow. This is the same thing with big airplanes. Just go there, fly the airplane into the touchdown zone, regardless of Pappy and Glideslow information from this point on. 
Well guys, this is only the second video in English here on the channel. I am not a native speaker. I hope I have transmitted the message in a very nice way to you. I hope you have enjoyed. Please let me know in the comments below. If you feel like I deserve, please take this moment to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet, and activate the notification bell so you receive every notification of new videos of this channel. I will always indicate when the video is in English with this information here and the beginning of the title. You can also follow me on my social media from this point on. I am also posting everything in Portuguese as well as in English. Thanks a lot for your support. I'll see you next time.